Hey, what's up guys, Vishnu here, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use a sign off switch to create a wall plate that you can control with your phone. Boom. This video is sponsored by IC Station, where you can get great products for even greater prices. You can get robots, modules, function modules, any modules you want. Check out icstation.com for more information. Smart home automation has always been one of those iffy areas for me. I never really wanted to do it because it seemed like too much work and too infeasible. I was browsing the web one day and I came across a sign on switch on icstation.com and it looked like a pretty good deal to me. An app controlled the smart switch for under $12. Great deal, isn't it? So I went ahead and asked IC Station if I could have a copy and they sent one over to me happily. After a few days of anxious waiting, the module finally arrived in all its glory. The module arrived in a pretty sweet looking blue box. Its packaging indicated that it worked with Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant, and on the side there were some specifications on the device. Upon opening the box, you can see that the sauna switch itself falls out, a bag of screws, and the instruction manual. Although the PCB may look complicated at first, in actuality it's pretty simple. There is a simple ESP driver uh, board driving the relay, and a lot of the stuff you see is just power circuitry. On the back of the device, you can see there are large solder pads for the AC voltage, and they are split apart by cutouts in the board. By the end of this video, you will be able to create a wall switch that uses a button to control the light on your roof. You also can use Alexa to control your lights. Watch this. Alexa, turn Sri Vishnu top on. Boom. Now, enough chit-chatting, let's get to how this all works. 9 out of 10 houses will have this white thing inside your switch. This is basically a line input that's unused for the most part. So what you should do is get another piece of solid core wire and strand that in without this piece. Again, you should really wear gloves for all this work. So finish straining that in. And there, we have one of our inputs. And now we just need to find which of the two inputs will deliver power and which two have to connect for your power to go on. So basically use your multimeter, set it to 200 volts, and go around checking if anything returns a value for you. In my case, the white wire and the black wire, when fused together, create 117 volts. It's around 120. Now let's check the white and the red. Nope, nothing. And the red and the black. Nope, not enough. So the white and black wires in my thing provide power. And when I connect these two, they switch on and off. So now let's wire them up to the sawn off switch. To get my sawn off like this, I do quite a bit of soldering. But only four wires. And there are a few different pads that you have to solder to. Let's do that now. So the first thing we have to do is remove this button. Basically just snap it off and the whole thing will come off like that. This is because we're going to be installing our own button. And then here we'll be left with two contacts. And how this kind of button works is these opposite ones are connected uh, when this button is pressed. So basically solder one side of this and add some solder to this because there's not enough solder on here. Make sure there's a nice big bead there. Then go to the other side of the switch you want to put on and add a nice big bead of solder there. There. Now switch over to the back of this board and on the back find the two contacts that the relay gets in touch with. In my case it's this contact right here and this contact right here. Again this will all be in the description below. So basically take that and then solder two wires onto this. There's a second one. Now the front should have sufficiently cooled by now. Basically now go back to the front of it and solder these wires in. There. Now all the wires are in, now let's connect up to button. Now let's get to wiring the button. First, turn all the solder joints on the button. Once you've tinned it, attach the two buttons from the wire to your two buttonholes. And then connect the two wires from the LED right up to the two LED contacts. Now in my case, I chose to add a wall plate to make it look better, so I can control it like this, and I can have this in the background. Now this is just preference, you can also just leave the button dangling, but I suggest you put a wall plate on, just for safety. And finally, to finish everything off, just cover the whole bottom with electrical tape, just to make sure no contacts get exposed. It doesn't matter if you cover the whole thing in electrical tape, just the bottom needs to be covered. 
So now let's get to wiring the switch. I really recommend that you have gloves while doing this. So the top one is neutral and the bottom one is ground. But in my case, neutral and neutral have to be connected for it to work. And the sauna switch works by switching live. So I'm going to put my neutral on the bottom and my live on the top. And finally, install the last wire at the very bottom. Now you come to the final moment of truth. Press the button. If everything works, the light should be turning on and off, or at the very least, it shouldn't short. If it doesn't turn on and off, try looking for other pairs of wires. But in my case, it works, so let me fit it back into the wall. Installing the wall plate back inside the wall can be hard. Most often the switch dislodges wires already there, so th sometimes the wiring gets off and you have to readjust it every single time. To be able to control the button from anywhere, press the button for 5 seconds. That'll prompt the Wi-Fi setup part. Now let's get to fully setting up our device. Go to your device's app store and get the e Link app. At the bottom of the screen, click the plus button and then click the AP button at the bottom. Then click the next button. Next, follow the instructions on screen and go to your settings and connect to your device's Wi-Fi. After that, click the next button and follow along with the instructions until your device is added to your list. Now to set it up with Alexa, download the eWeeLink Smart Home Fan skill from the App Store. Uh, you can get this and then go to Smart Home. Then click Add Device and Alexa will use your skill to discover devices. Now, if you're in the app, you can set timers and do a bunch of stuff. You can control this from anywhere. And in the timers, you can add multiple features, such as repeating days and the turn. So you're getting the ability to control your devices with Alexa, your phone, and even the physical button itself for under $10. I mean, that's a great deal, isn't it? Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, then please leave a like and subscribe. If you didn't like it, then dislike it and leave why you didn't like it in the comments below. I will leave all the schematics and everything in the comments below. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.